In this video, I'm going to be talking about doing a Mindscape land survey. So if you were going to sort of live on a piece of property indefinitely, the first thing that you would want to do is sort of a survey of the land, right? You need to understand what it is that is on the land and the different features and the climate, right? As we were talking about in the last video, you, you would need to really understand what it is that's going on on your piece of property before you can move on to sort of building out a plan for what you wanted to build or it wouldn't be very wise to start building something without looking at sort of the climate and the features that are already there because you may do something like want to build a, a pool, right? And if you just started digging and you didn't know that there's, you know, extremely hard rock all around the area, you might not understand what you're in for. And you may not be able to, in certain climates, build certain features or the amount of difficulty that you would face might be so severe that you might realize that maybe you should work on something else instead, right? If you were going to build sort of like a pool in a desert, depending on the value you could get from that compared to other projects, you might not want to work on that, right? Uh, in the same way, like if you didn't have a home in the desert, right? You wouldn't want to first start working on a pool. You'd want to kind of understand what it is that you have and what's available and what it is going to take to build certain things before you made plans and undertook any projects. So your mind operates much the same way, right? What happens to a lot of people is they get caught up in sort of these ideas as they strike them and then they start to pursue them even though that may or may not be the most useful thing, right? So for example, you might suddenly catch the idea of like, oh, I should learn to be a public speaker when your relationships are all failing and that's causing you a lot of distress and then you, you end up spending a bunch of time on this other project because you didn't pay attention to what was already there, what was creating or limiting your happiness the most. So the first step is to do this land survey, right? You need to go out and you need to figure out what, what the climate is and what is likely to grow. So in your mind, the way that that works is you want to start doing things that help you figure out which parts of your life are more ingrained and which are less ingrained. So here are some of the ways that you can do that to make things more tangible. One thing that you can do is look at uh, a bunch of different studies, right? So things like the big five, right? Like personality tests that help you determine um, different parts of what tests say your personality is. Now, you need to take that with a grain of salt because all of these tests have some criticisms. Uh, the strongest one is the big five, right? The, that's the most scientifically verified but if you do something like this use these as a way to sort of cause self-reflection as opposed to tell you exactly what your life is right other things that you can do are like keep a journal of how you're spending most of your time right it's very surprising to a lot of people once they start tracking time uh where it is that their time is going and one of the best examples of this is if you feel like you have no time and you do this sort of exercise you'll find you know hours disappearing into social media when you felt like you weren't on it that much or uh feel like you work out a lot but then you actually start paying attention to it and realize you've only been working out twice a week things like that show up as you do sort of this tracking other things that you can do are sort of like a historical review right of the things that have come up for you frequently or been a problem for you throughout your life or things that you've naturally been drawn to right other things that you can do is sort of look back through um your life and, and sort of figure out the things that have come most easily to you or have had the most trouble for you another way that you can sort of explore this is to spend just do, you know, reflection in whatever way you want or just to sit alone with your thoughts and sort of observe them. Um, you can do this through, you know, more formal practices like meditation or, or journaling, but you can also do this just spending time alone, right? Just like taking a long walk in nature. Uh, another thing that you can do is ask the people around you, right? Start asking, you know, what traits have you seen out of me? What things have been common throughout the time you've known me? Um, things like that. So with all of these, you need to take everything, you know, with a grain of salt, be a little bit more 
measured and reserved and, and analytical about the way that you integrate them into your life, right? Uh, one stray insight or one comment from someone else or one result on some random personality test doesn't necessarily mean, oh, these things are for sure locked and these other things are not. But instead what it does is it starts giving you a picture of sort of your set of attributes, your traits, the way you're spending time, the habits you have, and let you start to see or think about the way that some of these things may be more anchored than others, right? So for example, if your entire life you have found yourself feeling sort of shame, right? And shame is something that that just keeps coming up. That is likely some, something that you're pre destined to feel more often but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's it's always going to be the case so for example let's say that you feel shame pretty often right and that's something that's come up for you your whole life you may have some predisposition to feeling shame but it doesn't mean that that is always going to be the case however it does mean that might be something you need to pay attention to and work around so for me for example um depression was one of those things where i have sort of a predisposition to depression, but it doesn't mean I'm going to be depressed 100% of the time. And throughout the years, I've been able to find different <sighs> tactics and strategies. One, to not feel that as often, right? To to make it happen less often. And also to find tools that I can use to moderate that experience when I'm in it. But I would have never really gotten to that point had I not first taking a survey of sort of my life and realize like, oh, this is actually something that that happens to me fairly commonly, right? And it's something that I should probably start to think about and plan around. Now, obviously things like that are probably going to come up pretty easily, but you might be surprised as you go through this reflection process what exactly you start to uncover, right? A lot of these themes and ideas and patterns and whatnot are buried just a few layers under the surface. And if you're not regularly spending time doing some of these exercises and paying attention to sort of the way that you spend time, you may realize that you've been on autopilot for quite a few things, right? That's how the majority of people tend to operate is sort of in this, you know, uh, way of just wa wandering around their, their landscape and whatever happens to look good. Oh, I guess I'll do some gardening today. Okay, I don't feel like gardening anymore. Oh, I guess I'll start working on a bridge. Well, I'm not going to do that anymore. So getting sort of this more full picture and spending more measured time on some of these practices will allow you to have a clearer picture so that you are able to make more informed decisions moving forward. It's really, really critical to start developing this sort of picture of your mind and and the shape of the way that you act and interact with the world beyond sort of the surface level oh i think i'm this kind of person i think i do this right as you get deeper you may uncover things that are really important and really useful for you for optimizing your happiness and improving your life so that's sort of the main thrust of this video right the first thing you need to do is find some exercises that you can do sort of you know the, i've listed some here there are a lot more Anything that allows you to explore your mind, explore your thought patterns, explore your actions, explore uh, your personality and, and traits, those are going to be things that are useful. Of course, you know, you're going to hit a point of diminishing returns where like if you spend a ton of time on this, you're going to have a good idea of a lot of the different pieces and whatnot. Um, you can always go deeper, right? In the same way, you could always survey your land even more detailed and you can get more and more granular. And I would sort of recommend you do the same with your mind, right? You might want to start with some of these really high level things and, and sort of develop a, a baseline picture. And then maybe you work on some projects, maybe you don't. But as time goes on, as you need it, getting more granular into, okay, how come every time someone, you know, makes a loud noise or raises their voice, I start to panic more than I feel like I should, right? These more granular things as opposed to why do I sabotage all my relationships? Um, you know, you want to work from the highest level and get more granular as you go in the same way that you would if you owned a piece of land and were trying to understand how to best optimize it. So that's all I've got for this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please take a second to subscribe as it really helps out a lot. If you're looking for more content, there's all sorts of information over at howtohappy.com. And if you want something a little bit more condensed and concise, I've also written the book Mindscaping, which is essentially a framework for optimizing happiness. So we'll have the link there as well. And that's all I've got. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.